so this is the third lecture of uh, real time operating system we are going to discuss about the scheduling algorithms in this video so this is actually a quick revision video of all the scheduling algorithms that we study mainly in rtos that is real time operating systems okay so let us move on to the video without further delay so first let us see what is the purpose of scheduling algorithm why we go for scheduling so scheduling the main advantages is maximum cpu utilization that is if you are going to uh, schedule the various process uh, in a proper way cpu can be utilized maximum fair allocation of cpu then maximum throughput maximum output maximum turnaround time maximum sorry minimum waiting time and minimum response time so the waiting time can be reduced and also response time can be increased that is a uh, response time yeah it can be uh, minimized or the response can be made faster okay so these are the main advantages of going for a proper scheduling or a scheduling algorithm okay let us discuss about various scheduling before that how this scheduling is actually done let us try to understand with the help of a diagram so uh, in the late, latest video that is in the previous video on rtos we have discussed about various process or various task and uh, i have told you while explaining the the state diagram process state diagram that various task will be coming and they will be in the ready state so there is actually a queue which is present in the ready state or there is a queue called ready queue in which all the task that are in the ready state will be waiting so this is the queuing of various task or process when i'm saying task you can also think uh, of the word called process both are same okay so these task all the task which are in the ready state will be waiting in this queue and the scheduler will be scheduling the task and will be allocating to the various processor okay or the computing entity okay so this is how the scheduler is working from the ready queue it will be picking the task and it will be giving to the computing unit now scheduling algorithm means what algorithm the scheduler is following to pick the task from the queue in which manner the task is selected from the queue that is which all task is selected what is the algorithm used that is called a scheduling algorithm let us discuss one by one first one is a preemptive scheduling uh preemptive scheduling means consider that one task is running in between uh, one task is running another urgent task has come okay so the current running task will get that is will get uh, stopped or it will be moving to the ready state from the running state and the urgent task or the high priority task will get executed that type of scheduling is called a preemptive scheduling let us discuss it with the help of a example that will be more better so consider that uh, task 1 was getting executed okay at that time task 2 has come so the task 1 execution has stopped it it is moving to the ready state from the running state if you don't know what is ready state and running state please do watch the video on process and threads you will get to know what is the ready state running state the state diagram i have explained okay so the task will move from running state it was actually running task 1 was actually running from the uh, running state it will move to the ready state then task 2 will get executed and while task 2 was executing task 3 has come again task 2 is moving to the ready state and then task 3 will be executed completely then task 2 is resumed and after completion of task 2 task 1 is resumed so the task 1 and task 2 are clearly interrupted here and this type of scheduling is called preemptive scheduling next type of scheduling which is non preemptive scheduling means here once a task execution has started only after the completion of that task the next task can be executed okay let us discuss with the help of the diagram itself here you can see very clearly only after completion of task 1 task 2 is permitted however a big priority task the task 2 is task 1 cannot be preempted means in between interruption is not allowed same the case for task 2 and task 3 this type of scheduling is called non preemptive scheduling these two terms are very important if you are going for some interview interviews also these two terms will be 
that you should be familiar with okay next let us discuss some of the scheduling algorithms and while uh, explaining the algorithms i'll try to explain to you whether it is non preemptive and preemptive okay first type of uh, algorithm which is a very simple one and that is called a first come first serve algorithm fcfs okay so this is a non preemptive scheduling algorithm means when a task is coming and then it is uh, getting executed means in between it cannot be interrupted okay so that type of uh, algorithm is called a first come first serve algorithm so the task that arrives first in the scheduling queue it is uh, being put to the running state and start utilizing the cpu it is relatively a simple scheduling algorithm where all the task will get executed eventually the response time is high as this is a non preemptive type of algorithm okay let us discuss with the help of example so this is the arrival time means initially p0 has come then p1 then p2 then p3 so based on that arrival itself it is getting scheduled see p0 p1 p2 p3 okay p0 has come first then p2 then p3 then sorry then uh, p1 then p2 then p3 likewise only the scheduling is done there is no other criteria opted here only the first come there is whichever task has come first it is getting executed there is no other criteria taken okay next step of algorithm is shortest job first algorithm here it is again a non preemptive type of algorithm and in this algorithm the scheduler must obtain information about the executing time of each task so here the scheduler should be aware of uh, the uh, the uh, executing time uh, means the running time of every task and whichever task is having the shortest executing time it is executed first sorry it is scheduled first okay so that type of uh, algorithm is called a sjf or shortest job first algorithm now the disadvantage of this algorithm is that it requires total execution time of a task to be known before it is run before even running a task you should be knowing or the scheduler should be knowing how much time it will take for executing okay let us discuss with the help of the diagram here the execution time or the best worst time is given here p1 is having 21 uh, p2 3 p3 6 then all these are in milliseconds okay p4 2 now we can see clearly p4 is having the shortest execution time then p2 then p3 then p1 so the scheduling is done accordingly okay now the drawing uh, that is the arrangement or this chart is called a gantt chart okay this is a gantt chart which is the uh, diagram which shows the scheduling okay so the scheduling algorithm when it is uh, drawn in the form of a chart it is called gantt chart so this uh, that is this gantt chart is for the sjf algorithm so p4 is having shortest execution time so it is coming first then p2 then p3 then p1 okay and also the average uh, time will be 0 plus 2 plus 5 plus 11 here the average waiting time okay it is not the executing time it is a waiting time okay so here uh, the p2 has to wait how much time p2 has to wait so let us start with p4 p4 has no waiting time it has uh, immediately uh, moved to the Uh, scheduling that is it is it has immediately scheduled so there is no waiting time for p4 then p2 has 2 millisecond waiting time see here two, after 2 millisecond only p1 has sorry after 2 millisecond only p2 has uh, started its execution so 2 millisecond then after 5 millisecond p3 has started so 5 then after 11 millisecond only p1 has moved to the Run, running state so total waiting time will be 0 plus 2 plus 5 plus 11 by 4 okay that is 4.5 millisecond okay so that we will uh, be doing uh, as a separate video that is calculation of average waiting time and uh, turn around time and all those things here just understand how the scheduling is done okay so the scheduling here is done based on the execution time whichever task is having the uh, shortest executing time it is scheduled first next algorithm is priority scheduling algorithm okay so the priority scheduling algorithm is one of the popular scheduling algorithms here each task is assigned a pri priority level and basic principle of uh, basic principle of this scheduling algorithm is that the task with the highest priority will be executed first let us see the diagram here 
executing time and the priority is given okay here uh, if you see a number uh, of lesser value that will that is considered as a higher priority okay so here you can see the priority values is 2 1 4 and 3 right out of these values 1 is the highest priority okay don't get confused 4 is not the highest priority 1 is the highest priority okay then after that 2 is the next highest priority then the next highest is p uh, 3 then the least priority is 4. Now, based on the priority, the tasks are getting scheduled. So, which one is having the highest priority? P2. So, P2 is executed first. Then, then P1 will be coming. Then after that, P3 is coming. Sorry, P4 is coming. Then P3. So, this is how the scheduling is done based on the priority scheduling algorithm. Next one, round robin scheduling algorithm. Okay. So, here round robin is actually a preemptive scheduling algorithm. Here also the scheduling algorithm, if you see this uh, scheduling algorithm, it can be non-preemptive and preemptive. Based on the uh, nature of the scheduling queue, it can be preemptive, preemptive or non-preemptive. But here if you see the arrangement, uh, you are not using any preemption here. Only complete, after only complete execution, uh, every task is there is the other task is started okay so if you want to have a, a preemptive one that is also possible now round robin is clearly a preemptive scheduling algorithm because here what uh, is done is here there is no priorities assigned to the task each task is put into the running state for a fixed predefined time and that is called a time slot or a time slice Okay, so every task will be executed to a particular time slice and then this time slice is repeated and based on this round robin scheduling is done. The advantage of this type of scheduling is it is simple, it's simplicity and relatively easy implementation. Now the clear explanation we will be doing with the help of this diagram. Okay, so there are three processes here P1, P2 and P3. And the executing time or the duration of the process are 3, 4 and 3. So, first we are going to take the P1 task and it is executed for a particular time slice. Here the time slice is taken as 1 millisecond or 1 unit. Okay. So, this is 1 unit. Not millisecond. It is taken as 1 unit. It is having 3 units of execution. Then P2 is having 4 units. P3 is having 3 units. So, P1 is executed for 1 unit. Then Again, next one, P2 is executed for one unit, then P3 is executed for one unit. Then, the next cycle will uh, start. Again, P1 is executed for another one unit, P2 is executed for another one unit, P3 is executed for another one unit. Then, P1 is again executed for, and after this P3, the next cycle will start. Then, P1 is again executed for one unit, and with this, the P1 execution has completed. See here, total P1 execution is 3 units. The first unit is here, which is in the first cycle. In the second cycle, again P1 is executed for 1 unit. In the third cycle here also, the P1 is executed for 1 unit. And after this, P1 has completed its execution. Then, P2 again executed for 1 unit. P3 also, after this time period, that is in this unit, P3 has also completed its execution and left out is only the task P2 which is one unit more left. So, that will be kept into the last unit. So, likewise this cycle will go on and in every cycle all the process is executed for a particular time unit. Uh, there is particular time slice and every process is having or every task is having equal execution of time on every cycle. So, you, if you consider this P1, P2, P3, this is one cycle, this is the next cycle and this is the next cycle. So, every uh, process or every task is having equal time unit of or time uh, slice of execution in every cycle and this will get repeated until uh, every process or each and every process is getting completed. Okay. So, this is called round robin schedule. 
So in this video, we have discussed about the various scheduling algorithms. We have also discussed about what is preemptive and what is non-preemptive scheduling. So uh, I'm really hoping that uh, you found the video useful. We have discussed about all the important scheduling algorithms together in one video. So uh, if the video was useful, please do give it a thumbs up. Also give your comments in the comment session. Uh, that always motivates me to do more and more videos. And if you want uh, more videos on real-time operating systems, that also please do mention in the comment session. And please do subscribe to the channel and support the growth of the channel. That's it. Thanks for watching and keep on watching.